Welcome to AP Physics and the Introduction to Measurement video. In this video we're going to talk about uh, symmetric prefixes and then using dimensional analysis uh, in doing conversions. To start off with here, um, I'll tell you up front that your AP reference table does have a little chart on it that you have access to for both part one and part two that has the metric prefixes and their corresponding powers of 10. That said, I would greatly encourage you uh, to know some of the metric prefixes and their corresponding powers of 10 without having to go look them up as it would save you time during the exam. So we're gonna review some of those now um, here real quick. We're gonna start small and uh, get bigger. And he, these are the main ones that we'll be using in physics this year. We start with 10 to the negative 9, and the metric prefix for 10 to the negative 9 is nano. You may have heard of this before. Uh, probably the most common unit in physics is the nanometer, when, in which you'll hear nano used. Uh, nanometer is, a, is the measurement in which the wavelength of light is measured. You probably, if you're a, a science student, uh, have heard of nanotechnology, for example. Uh, another another nice use for the a metric prefix nano. 10 to the negative 6 is micro, micrometer, microsecond, uh, microcoulomb will be very typical units that you'll hear um, used in physics that uses the metric prefix micro, 10 to the negative 6. Many of you I'm sure know 10 to the negative 3, milli, uh, millimeter, probably the most common. 10 to the negative 2 is centi. Again, centimeter is probably the most common unit that we'll have there. And now we switch over at exponents greater than 10 to the 0. And we, most common above that is 10 to the 3rd. 1,000, which is kilo, kilometer, kilogram. The standard unit of mass in physics is the kilogram, not the gram. Uh, 10 to the 6, a million, is mega. Uh, we use a unit of energy in physics called a mega electron volt. You'll sometimes hear that abbreviated million electron volt, uh, million, million electron volts because mega is 10 to the 6, which is million. 10 to the 9th is giga, and I'm sure you've heard of that, especially with regards to computers for gigabytes, etc. Okay? All right, let's switch over to our next topic here conversions. Uh, using dimensional analysis, I'm sure if you took chemistry, you're familiar with dimensional analysis and the use of uh, dimensional analysis to convert from one unit to another. Let's start with a reminder on what it is. Um, dimensional analysis is treating units like algebraic quantities to convert from one unit to another. We're going to review and practice dimensional analysis and a couple of other math skills here by doing a problem in the book on page 20, number 24. So if you need to pause this video for a moment and grab your textbook, open it up to page 20, number 24. The problem reads, a house is 50 feet long and 26 feet wide and has eight foot high ceilings. What is the volume of the interior of the house in cubic meters and in cubic centimeters? Now we have an issue right away in this problem that we're given units in the English system but we're asked for answers in the metric system. You will not be asked to do this on the AP exam but you will fre frequently be asked to do this um, in homework problems. So it is a skill that we need to grasp onto here. Okay. So we start out with our givens in the problem, which was uh, 50 feet by 26 feet by 8 feet. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and calculate the volume of the house in cubic feet. And everybody's probably pretty familiar with that. Length times width times height in order to get the volume. <clears throat> so 
So we'll go ahead, get your calculator out again, pause if you need time. Whenever we do these videos and you're asked to perform calculations or to follow along with the problem, it is really important that you pause the video, perform the calculation yourself, and then use the video to check your answer. Do not use the video to just write the answer down without performing the calculation as you get no experience or benefit from doing that. So go ahead and calculate this answer and you should get 10,400 mistake there 10,400 cubic feet. Now our job is to take that answer 10,400 cubic feet and convert it to meters cubed and centimeters cubed. We are going to use dimensional analysis to do that. Converting from one unit to another, treating them as algebraic quantities. Well, if, feet, if the foot was an algebraic quantity, where would you put it in this fraction to eliminate feet as a unit? You would select putting feet in the denominator so that when you take feet and divide by feet, they cancel out. That means our desired unit of meters goes in the numerator. And now what we need is a conversion between meters and feet. If you go to the front of your textbook on the inside of the cover, there's a table there that converts from English to metric units and among some other units as well. And we find that one meter is 3.281 feet. Well, if we went and performed this calculation right now, what units would we have left? Our feet would cancel out one of the three feet from our cubic feet, and we would be left with square feet. What are we left with then? Square feet meters. That's not what we want. So in order to get our desired outcome of meters cubed, we've got to get rid of all the cubic feet. To accomplish this, we either perform this calculation two more times, or we can use a little math trick and just cube this quantity. That would give us, let me switch over here, cubic feet, I'm sorry, cubic meters, cubic feet, but what we also have to remember is to cube the number as well. This now would cancel out our cubic feet, and to get our answer, we take 10,400 and divide by 3.281 cubed. Go ahead and perform that on your calculator. Again, pause if you need a moment. And you should get 294 meters cubed. We're now going to take that 294 meters cubed. This is an easier calculation. And we're going, to we're going to convert it to centimeters cubed. Where would meters have to go? In our dimensional analysis calculation, in order to cancel out meters, it would have to go in the denominator. That means centimeters would have to go in the numerator. Now you have options here. Some of you may know there are 100 centimeters in one meter, and that's what you would do. I prefer to just stick with the metric prefix approach here. Put the 1 with the non-standard unit, and then put the power of 10 represented by the prefix with the standard unit. The power of 10 percent is 10 to the negative 2. So I put that with the standard unit, which is meters. Again, we're in the same quandary as our previous calculation. We're not going to cancel out all the meters cubed here. We had to add meters squared centimeters, which is not what we want. So we would go ahead and either perform that calculation two more times or simply cube this quantity. Again, that would give us cubic centimeters, cubic meters, and we got to remember that we also want to cube uh, that number 10 to the negative 2 as well. Well, what do we get when we do that? 
10 to the negative 2q, remember when you do this, you simply, when you, you're multiplying, so you simply add the exponents, negative 2 plus negative 2 plus negative 2 is 10 to the negative 6. So we take 294 meters cubed, which is now canceled out, 294 divided by 10 to the negative 6. Go ahead and do that on your calculator, or um, you can do it in your head too if you want. 2.94 times 10 to the 8 centimeters cubed is our answer. And whenever we have large numbers like that, we always express them using scientific notation. So you had a, a fair amount of review here thrown at you as far as measurement is concerned using dimensional analysis, powers of 10, and how to manipulate those. Um, so hopefully this has been a good review for you. Um, you need to watch the next video on order of magnitude to complete uh, the discussion on the introduction to measurement.